So this is the tooth of T-Rex. This is the actual size. Only about this much would have stuck out of the mouth. With teeth this big, T-Rex could chew anything apart that it wanted. Literally, it would grab animals and tear them into chunks and swallow the chunks whole, bone and all. Hi, my name's Mark Lowen. I'm a paleontologist at the University of Utah and the Natural History Museum of Utah. I love watching movies. I love dinosaurs. I especially love dinosaur movies. Jurassic Park, 1993. So the question is, did dinosaurs make sounds? Of course they did. Are the sounds at Jurassic Park realistic? Mm, sure. Animals like T-Rex had huge resonating chambers. They had air sacs throughout their neck, into their lungs, throughout their belly. This would have been part of the soundboard that brings the sound out on T-Rex. The kind of sound that would stop your heart for a second. Don't move. You can't see us if we don't move. The actual paleontologist who was the character study for Dr. Alan Grant and also an advisor on the film was Dr. Jack Horner. Jack Horner came up with the idea that the olfactory portion of the brain is relatively bigger than it is in other dinosaurs. So people started saying T-Rex had a really good sense of smell, therefore T-Rex was a scavenger. And then this went further to now T-Rex can't see very well. It just follows its nose around. T-Rex had three-dimensional binocular vision. T-Rex had an overlapping field of view of about 60 degrees, which is more than something like a hawk today. We know that animals with binocular vision today are hunters. We know that T-Rex could see quite well. Dr. Alan Grant bet his life and probably would have lost it in that situation. You like your stick? Go on, get it. And no wonder you're extinct. One of the interesting things about Dilophosaurus is they made it smaller than it really is. It's really about 25 to 30 feet long, but that's only one of the real complaints. This is the worst dinosaur probably in the entire Jurassic Park franchise. We have absolutely no evidence of that neck frill that came out of Dilophosaurus. At the same time, there are modern animals like the lizard that has that, but we should actually be able to identify that in a dinosaur. So that would be pure speculation. The real artistic license is in the idea that they're depicting Dilophosaurus as venomous. But how is it getting that venom from inside of its body outside onto Nedry? Now, animals that spit venom, they have hollow teeth that actually have poison glands connected to the top of that hollow tooth, and it can inject the poison into that tooth under pressure to shoot it out. Dilophosaurus did not have hollow teeth. We have absolutely no evidence that any dinosaur was venomous, much less that any dinosaur could spit that venom. Dilophosaurus is literally the worst dinosaur in the Jurassic Park franchise. Jurassic World 2015. Oh, here fire, do not fire. Stand down. Delta, I see you. Back up. Good. Good. Charlie, the main problem its size. We actually have exquisite fossils of Velociraptor, and this is what its skull looks like. In fact, if you had maybe a pair of work boots and a stick, you could probably fend off this dinosaur. This is the sickle claw of Velociraptor. It's sharp, and it would have had fingernail covering that would have made it even longer and sharper. But at the same time, it's not the size of the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. This sickle claw was found right here in Utah. This is actually the sickle claw for Utah Raptor. And Utah Raptor is the size of the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park. One of the things about Velociraptor is we never find them together. So we don't know that Velociraptors ran in packs. We actually know that Velociraptor was covered with feathers. The Velociraptors in Jurassic Park don't have feathers because they weren't known at the time the movie came out. The Lost World, 1997. One 
of our problems as paleontologists with this is the size of the stegosaurs. These are absolutely huge. Stegosaurs got big, but they did not have nine foot long spikes at the end of their tail. So the plates on the back of stegosaurus, the debate has been, what are those for? Are they for display? Are they for protection? Are they for thermal regulation? Are the animals pumping blood into the plates to use them as a giant radiator? When we look at the entire family of Stegosaurus, not all of them have plates. This would actually argue against them being used for thermal regulation. But almost certainly, to me, the plates on a Stegosaurus are for the same reason that your cat, when it gets frightened, will stand sideways, puff up its fur, and look bigger. It's a way for Stegosaurus to say, I'm too scary, I'm bigger than you even think I am, you probably don't want to mess with me and try to eat me. So the baby stegosaur has really got some weird proportions. They got the fact right that it does have a big eye, but it also has some weird upturned snout to look like a puppy. We don't have any ideas stegosaur ontogeny would be any different than how most of the armored dinosaurs grew up. The fact that you're changing the angle of the roof of your skull is almost certainly not plausible. We do have some baby stegosaurs out there, one that actually would be about the size of a German Shepherd. Super cute, you'd want to meet it in a petting zoo, but at the same time, some of the things that they're doing in this reconstruction are not legitimate. Stegosaurus would have to actually break its tail to actually turn its tail spikes downward like that. Lateral movements with their spikes are possible, but a downward motion like that is not. The absolute largest stegosaur spike is right about two and a half to three feet long. Having the spikes that we're showing in some views of these animals where the spikes are this long, that's a bit much. Really, this is a trend that we see in the Jurassic Park franchise. If there's a chance to make it just a little bit bigger and therefore scarier, we're gonna do that. Land of the Lost, 2009. What a priceless movie. An Allosaurus female. Yeah. We're in luck. These large predators are extremely territorial. Virtually nothing will distract them from each other. Run! This is just pure silliness. This is one of the better depictions of the skull of Allosaurus. We're actually learning more and more about the skin of Allosaurus, and the skin of Allosaurus would not have looked the way that we filmed it here in the movie. The skin of Allosaurus basically looked like basketball leather. So almost certainly, the top predators in the ecosystem are not going to work together to chase the humans. At the same time, these animals never met each other. It turns out there's more time between Allosaurus and T-Rex than there is between T-Rex and Will Ferrell. We would have had to have put time travel into the equation to put all of these characters together at the same time in this movie. Spread out! It'll confuse him! Try running a serpentine pattern! He's incapable of rapid course correction! T-Rex is not a fast animal, but T-Rex is faster than Will Ferrell and would catch him even if he was running straight away from it. So if we think about dinosaur agility, if you have a lot of weight on either side of a pivot point, it becomes harder to pivot. If figure skater holds their arms out to the side, and when they're doing that, they can't turn very fast. But if they want to speed up, they pull their arms in and they will start to rotate faster. T-Rex having a long tail and a head at either end of the point on which its legs are attached means that it could not turn very fast. Running in a serpentine pattern is probably a great idea against dinosaurs, but dinosaurs are generally faster than people anyway. Probably the best thing to do is stay ahead of the rest of the people in your group. Jurassic Park 3, 2001. <laughs> Spinosaurus has for a long time been competing with Tyrannosaurus rex for the longest meat-eating dinosaur of all time. 
The skull of Spinosaurus was probably a couple of inches longer than the skull of T-Rex. The body almost certainly was about five feet longer than the body of T-Rex. T-Rex outweighed Spinosaurus by a large amount. Recently, new specimens have come out and they've redrawn this picture of what Spinosaurus looks like. Spinosaurus was much closer to a shape that looked like this, with a big, long, swimming adapted tail and relatively short limbs. This animal is adapted for living in the shallow oceans and eating fish. So this animal is an aquatic hunter. It's not going to live in the same environment as T-Rex. <laughs> There's not enough muscle on Spinosaurus to break the neck of T-Rex. We have skulls that are more complete and the skulls are very narrow with sharp conical teeth, very well adapted for eating things like fish. The skull of Spinosaurus is only on the order of four to five inches wide. Whereas T-Rex, which would have been almost two and a half feet wide. The bite of T-Rex would have crushed Spinosaurus's skull in a single bite. This would have not been a good match for T-Rex on the land. King Kong, 2005. And the premise of this movie is that we're in a lost world situation in which the dinosaurs on this island have been alive since the extinction of the dinosaurs. So we can imply 65 million years of further evolution. Anything that we say about the dinosaur behaviors is pure speculation because evolution could have taken dinosaur behavior in all kinds of different directions. What I do like is the way that the CGI artists rendered the sauropod long neck dinosaurs. These things have weight, they have muscle, and they're actually interacting with their environment in ways that truly huge animals would. These dinosaurs in this movie actually look somewhat like Brontosaurus or Apatosaurus, but at the same time, they also have features that are present in a different group of the long neck dinosaurs that we call the Titanosaurs. And they were really the wide load members of this group. The theropod that we see chasing these animals is Venatosaurus. And this is some sort of dinosaur closely related to things like Velociraptor and Dromaeosaurus. Its behavior does not look a whole lot like I envision within Dromaeosaurus and Velociraptorines, but 65 million years of isolated evolution on this island, anything can happen. Night at the Museum, 2006. <laughs> Number one, throw the bone. And I'm assuming that this is supposed to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but I don't recognize it. One of my problems with this is the rib does not shatter upon hitting the floor. It also is missing its belly ribs. Meat-eating dinosaurs had an extra set of ribs along its belly that it actually used to breathe. But this is a fun movie. Sounds like a dream sequence to me. The Land Before Time, 1988. <gasps> what a classic animated movie. Again, we have a mix of different dinosaurs that never met each other. So Sarah never met Littlefoot in time. Interesting that we actually see molars in Triceratops. The teeth are not molars. They're actually a slicing long line of teeth all put together. And I think we're anthropomorphizing these dinosaurs to make them cuter. We actually do know what baby long neck dinosaurs look like inside the egg. They have huge eyes. Some of them have a little beak that helps them break out of the egg. And they absolutely were just as cute as the dinosaurs in Land Before Time. One million years BC, 1966. <laughs> There's a lot of problems with the dinosaurs in this clip. Ceratosaurus, his posture is wrong. The horns on his face are wrong. His tail is super expressive like a cat. 
So at the time this movie was filmed, people thought that most meat-eating dinosaurs were these slow, plodding animals that basically sat on their tail. A tripodal stance, basically a tripod between the two legs, and that would keep the head and the arms in the air to do whatever they wanted. We now know meat-eating dinosaurs walked around balanced on their legs, with their tail held high in the air at the same level as their head. It wasn't really until the 70s and 80s we started getting a picture of dinosaurs as much more dynamic, not like these claymation dinosaurs in this film. One last thing I'd like to point out. Humans never coexisted with actual dinosaurs that we think of as dinosaurs. That never happened. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, 2018. Holy What I really like in this clip is the volcanic eruption. You can see the beginnings of the pyroclastic flow that's going to destroy the island. You see volcanic bombs flying through the air. We get some interesting dinosaurs that we hadn't seen much of before. Cynoceratops, that's a different story. Cynoceratops has way too big of a nose horn, and it's got some weird things going on on the back of its skull, to the point where I almost didn't recognize it. This dinosaur is famous because it's the only true horned dinosaurs related to Triceratops that actually has been found in Asia. We think it's a North American animal that walked over to Asia to live there towards the end of the Cretaceous. Carnotaurus. This is an animal that's closely related to Ceratosaurus, and it's actually quite well rendered. We actually have skin from across the body, on the tail, and on the face of Carnotaurus. This is one of the best rendered dinosaurs as far as what it actually looked like in real life. Carnotaurus, which is from Argentina, never met a Ceratopsian dinosaur in its entire life. It should have been frightened and amazed by the size of its head and probably just run away. But it's interesting the way that Cynoceratops is using its frill to protect its neck. The whole head toss, um, Cynoceratops does not have a neck that is strong enough to full toss Carnotaurus over its shoulder, but I do love the look. Interesting stuff, but again, T-Rex wins as it would win against any dinosaur. Fantasia, 1940. This classic Disney movie gave us one of our first glances of dinosaurs in the ecosystems in which they lived. Now, there's some problems here. Allosaurus, it's facing off with Stegosaurus, its natural mortal enemy, because we find Stegosaurus and Allosaurus in the same deposits. But at the same time, there are two time-traveling dinosaurs from the Cretaceous in Parasaurolophus and Triceratops who are watching this fight. We know that some of the depictions of some of these dinosaurs with Allosaurus kind of standing on its tail, with Stegosaurus flipping its tail over to try to poke at Allosaurus. But again, this is an important movie because it really set the stage for dinosaurs being these iconic beasts of the past. We follow up with other movies all the way into the 60s in which we're depicting dinosaurs in a similar way to Disney's animators in Fantasia. And then it really was Jurassic Park that broke the mold and started showing us dinosaurs in the ways that we see them today. This has been a blast. I hope that you've enjoyed dissecting some of these animals as much as I have. Mm -hmm.